list is a story all about how my book buying is out of control now I'd like to take a minute just sit right there talk you through all the books I've bought in the last couple of months because it's just ridiculous <laughs> everyone it's Rebecca here and welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi how are you doing today I'm bringing you another book haul because it really is getting out of control now and I need to really rein it in particularly with us moving soon um, these shelves are not going to stay the way they are they are going to be packed up and dismantled in the coming weeks possibly when this video goes live I highly doubt it though but yeah I'm looking around and I have <laughs> A lot of books in this stack this four stacks it's ridiculous like i don't know if i'll be able to show you hang on we have a problem that's it that's the problem um and now you're wonky <laughs> even better so without further ado i think you're still wonky this is ridiculous right, okay so without further ado um i'm just gonna jump straight in because this is insane i think i'll start with the holiday selection because we've been away so I bought some books you'll have seen the holiday vlogs if you haven't seen the holiday vlogs I'll leave a link to them down below that is where I go into these books in a little bit more detail but there's quite a few of them as is um so let's just get cracking first off I'm going to talk about the books that I got in Edinburgh this was in June so it's been a while since I've done a book haul so the first one I have is Girl in the Walls by AJ News of yeah news like no news maybe i'm not too sure how to pronounce that it sounded really interesting to me but look at that stenciled edge like that is the literally one of the only reasons i bought it it's an exclusive edition and it's signed by the author as well it sounds really interesting as i said i've got the synopsis for this in my other video so i'll leave a link to those down below if you would like to find out more where am i gonna put these oh christ okay <laughs> I'll find somewhere. Next up we have Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This is from Topping & Co. It's a signed first edition and it is beautiful. The colour is exactly the same as the regular edition except that this is obviously, a, hang on, let me just, oh look at that, it's like she's in a little halo. It's a regular edition only it's a signed first edition of the regular hardback. I'm very very excited about this one. This was one of my highly anticipated releases of the year. And then there's her widow signature in there. So very excited for this one as I said synopsis is in the other video. Next up we have One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Don't know why I bought this to be honest because I haven't read Red, White and Royal Blue and what if I hate Red, White and Royal Blue? What if I hate it? What have I done? I mean to be fair I normally give authors a couple of try tries anyway before completely giving up on them so very interested in this one. I believe it is a story about a young woman who goes on a train journey um, on her regular commute except that this commute kind of transport her back into the 60s I think it is 70s the 70s not the 60s so I'm very interested to see how that kind of plays out I then have a sequel to a book that I read years and years ago and that is Nixia Uprising by Scott Rington I read Nixia years ago absolutely bloody loved it would highly recommend anybody who wants to read like a spacey book this follows a young crew of people who are training to become the next set of astronauts to basically save the world we watch them go through the trials and tribulations it's a bit like Ender's Game um, if you like Ender's Game and you like A War Arising, you will like this book. 100% like Nyx here, just, just put it out there. We then also have the Earthsea series, the first four books by Ursula K. Le Guin. I got this one in a bookshop that I really wanted to go into in Edinburgh, but there wasn't really any classics taking my eye. And then I spotted this on the way out and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. I know that a lot of people that I have... Um, watched and supported for a while they tried to read this for something called the Le Guin Along and ended up packing it in halfway through. I'm gonna see why <laughs> and maybe I shall take you on that journey I don't know. So that is the Edinburgh books done. Next up we have <laughs> The Brighton books. I haven't edit, finished editing the footage for the Brighton books but I know there's um, The Appeal and also Wranglestone downstairs I need to bring upstairs as well as um, Shadow Black the sequel to Spellslinger which I got in Poundland so I couldn't say no. So there's three extra books to add to these piles but these books coming up I have gone into in more detail in my Brighton vlog. So the <laughs> first one is Meet Me in Another Life by Catriona Sylvie. This one is signed by the author. It has really nice black sprayed edges and I really wanted to get something in Waterstones and Brighton and this is the one that I picked. It has a map. It has a map and it follows two characters who I believe time travel um, and they keep passing each other in um, different time zones but every time they pass each other the other is at a different stage of their lives and they're trying to intertwine their lives to the point where they both meet at the right time I believe. Fully expecting to cry this one, 100%. We then have possibly 
my most exciting book purchase of this pile maybe because technically I did purchase this one and this is These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. I have got the uh, Fairy Loot edition of this. I almost cried when I seen the Fairy Loot edition of this but this is the standard hardback edition for the UK with the lovely blue feeling of the flowers on it. Very very excited. It's just oh, if you like Akatar, I believe this will be right up your street. I just I need to pick it up. I've got two copies of it. One in each hand maybe. Very excited about this one. If you want to know more about um, These Hollow Vows Go check out my fairy loot unboxing where I squeal like a small child. She's been given ice cream and cake over this book. So next up we have Madam by Phoebe Wynn. This is a Goldsboro book edition. I think it's signed. Is it signed? It has black marks on the side of it. Why does it have black marks on the side of it? I think it's fluff from the bag. Madam by Phoebe Wynn. This is supposed to be for fans of um, The Handmaid's Tale and Vox, I believe. Rebecca makes a secret history. I think I just made that first bit up. Really, really liked Rebecca. Absolutely loved Rebecca. But this is for people who are on the same vibe as The Handmaid's Tale. It's supposed to be really, really good. I'm quite intrigued to see where it goes. But as I said, more explanation in my other video. We then have two books from the Isle of Wight as part of this holiday. And that is The Postcard from Paris by Alex Brown and Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Lefteri, which I know I talked about because I have just edited that part of the video. So these two are talked about in quite a lot more detail than this in that video. We then have two books that I bought in Windsor. I'm very proud of this one actually to be honest and that is The Windsor Knot by S.J. Bennett. I couldn't not buy it in Windsor. I made a whole Instagram post. I thought it was very punny. I uh, took a picture of this outside Windsor Castle because why the hell not? Um, but this is the Queen following a murder solving a murder. Very exciting. And then we have Punching the Air by E.B. Saboy and Yusef Salam. This one is um, a pound. That's how much I paid for it. I think it was a pound in a charity shop. So when I seen it, I mean, I just had to get it. I don't know where I'm going to put it if I put my rainbow shells back up though. Very excited. There's like poems in this. There's all poems. I think it's all to told in poetry format. Um, very excited about this one. So those are the holiday books. Next we have just random purchases, let's be honest. So let's just go with this pal here. <laughs> so first off we have The Switch by Beth O'Leary. I picked this one up because I read the flat share in my little Edinburgh situation. Really really enjoyed it um, and wanted to try something else by this author so I picked this one up. This one follows a young girl and her grandma who switch homes for a while to see how the other one lives and to see if they can make a life and a living in the other person's situation. I imagine lots of laughs, lots of tears, probably love knowing Beth O'Leary's The Flat Chair, so I'm looking forward to this one, although I may cry a little bit. <laughs> Next up we have uh, Queen of Coin and Whispers by Helen Corcoran. This one is an exclusive ARC edition um, that I found on a Facebook group, which I just did an exchange for um, something off their Amazon wishlist, so it's a nice little trade. This one I was very, very excited for when it first came out. And it follows Queen Leah who inherits her corrupt uncle's bankrupt kingdom and brings a new spy master into the fold, Zania, who will take the job to avenge her murdered father. They grow closer and then I think they realise each other's secrets and I reckon they fall in love. But that's just me. Next up we have two books that I picked up from Boundary Mill. If you're in the UK, Boundary Mill is a store branch, or brand, sorry, that sells basically putting it in 20 year olds terms. I was going to say mid 20s, I'm not, I'm 30 next year. It's more like old lady, like high-end old lady fashion, um, kind of. <laughs> old lady but make it posh and cheap. That's how I personally see it because it sells a lot of things that I don't care about. It's good for men's clothes and men's shoes, like you can get a lot of stuff there, especially if you go walking and stuff like that, but they also have a book section, which is where I picked up the Goosebump selection for my nephews. And they loved them, it was great. Uh, but anyway, I picked up these two. So this is Kiss Cut and Blindsighted by Karen Slaughter. As far as I'm aware, these are the first two books by Karen Slaughter. A Small Town, A Brutal Murder, A Violent Killer. A Seer Spring and The Vulnerable One by One. These were on two for fiver, so I got them. And they're little tiny mass market size. They're so cute and tiny, even though they're about murder and death and apparently have a mind of their own. But I picked those ones up based on the fact that Karen Slaughter is one of Leanne from Novel Menagerie's go-to authors. And if you've seen my reading like Leanne video, I did actually enjoy some of the books that she selected. Uh, sorry, that I selected from her collection. So um, that's quite interesting. I'm excited to see if I actually get round to those and whether I actually enjoy them. Next up, we have a deal from The Works which is The Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth. This one I picked up because I have Veronica Roth's uh, Carve the Mark. Um, I bought, bought that in Mexico, so I'm, I'm probably never going to part with it. Um, <laughs> honeymoon memories. Um, but I picked this one up on the basis that Veronica Roth is quite a popular author and I just wanted to kind of see what the hype was and this is quite 
dark apparently compared to her normal work oh, oh my god there's small writing in this oh there's a map this follows the chosen ones who um saving the world made them heroes saving it again might destroy them i'm here for superhero stories unless it's adam silvera's uh infinite sun no thank you next up we have this poison heart which i picked up in waterstones it's from the author of cinderella is dead and i picked this one up because it was on buy one get one half price with you and me on vacation by emily henry not exactly the same kind of genre but you know we'll roll with it this poison heart i believe it's along the lines is it beauty and the beast retelling i feel like it's a beauty and the beast retelling slash no white retelling i don't know to break an ancient curse she must let her power bloom briseus has a gift she can grow an apple tree from seed in a heartbeat and flowers bloom at her touch when she inherits an old house she suddenly has the privacy to test her powers for the first time but as Bree stuck I think of the cheese, starts to magic the house's ramblings to grab, grab rambling grounds back to life. She finds she has also inherited generations of secrets. In a hidden garden overgrown with the most deadly poisonous plants on earth, a dark legacy lies waiting for her. And Bree's long departed ancestors won't let her rest until she finds it. So this is supposed to be contemporary fantasy about knowing where you come from and stepping into your power. Um, so I quite like the, the idea of the, excuse me, her Reddit read, but that's not right. The, the family history the, the sort of the idea that she is gonna you know grow into her family almost very interested about that one and then i picked up this one because you know what you and me on vacation by emily henry sounds like boy and girl fall in love you know a little bit of something something going on two best friends 10 summer trips their last chance to fall in love and this follows poppy and alex who meet 12 years ago on a summer holiday and i'm guessing they meet up every year since and yeah i'm guessing there's going to be partners involved each year they meet up and neither of them want the other partner to be there I'm guessing um i'm quite interested to see where it goes i mean you know beth o'leary herself has said a gorgeous romance so it's obviously going to be lovey dovey and probably smutty smutty which we've got to be in the right mood for next up i can't remember if i showed these ones i think i did we have the glass hotel by emily st john mandel and rainbow gray by laura ellen anderson again not exactly in the same vibes but you know i think i have already showed them i absolutely loved station 11 by emily st john mandel and this one is a thriller along the lines of i want to say along the lines of the last by hannah jameson but make it emily st john mandel hotel kit when New York financer walks in the hotel and hands her his card, it was the beginning of their life together. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm guessing this follows this young couple who have kind of fallen in love at this point, but each has secrets, I'm assuming, and glass hotel, throw stones and glass, it's going to shatter around you, some, some parable. And then we also have Rainbow Grey, which is a lovely little middle grade story that I'm really excited to read. I wish I'd picked up the Waterstones edition because it actually had like rainbow spray edges but I found this one in Tesco so I can't really complain it was only £4. And this follows Ray Grey who wishes she had magic like her friends. A forbidden trip to earth turns everything Ray thought she knew about herself upside down. Oh my god look it's a cat. Oh, that is so sweet and adorable. Oh, that is it. I am poor. Oh. Yes, okay. Anyway, next up we also have Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Eleni Taylor. This is um the third book, I want to say, because I bought the second one as part of my works order from a while back. So this is the third one. It's quite chunky. And this is it part of the Daughter and Smoke and Bone series. I picked this one up when I bought when I re-bought the Gracing series <laughs> uh copies for myself um after the incident which we're not talking about, and Vanessa's copies. So I picked this one up as part of that order. I then also have The Curator by M.W. Craven, which is the third book in the Washington Post series. Absolutely love The Puppet Show. Would highly, highly recommend that for pretty much anyone. It is a little bit graphic, but I would highly recommend it anyway. This is the third in that series, and I really need to pick up Black Summer, which is book two, so that I can move on to this one, because this one has had a lot more hype and love, and I know that there's another one come out, and I think it's called, like, Dead Ground or something. Really intrigued by that one, too. We then have... Which is Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. Yes, this is a regular edition. Yes, I own the Fairy Loot edition, but I don't want... I don't really particularly like the Fairy Loot edition. This is the Fairy Loot edition here. I don't particularly like it as much um, as other Fairy Loot editions. So I am thinking about getting rid of this one. So if anybody is in the UK and would like a Fairy Loot edition of... Um, which is steeped in gold it is signed it's an exclusive hardback because they don't do the hardback in the uk and it'll also come with this very intriguing very brooding young man if you would like that author letter as well um but if you let me know pop me a message let me know and we can work out a price of some sort because 
um, I would like to pass it on to somebody who will enjoy it but not actually rip your eyes out with it because um, I'm nice like that. So we have which is steeped in gold and the one that I was really 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 excited for earlier on this year and I can't wait to get to it. Okay so we then have two books that I found at car boot sales. We love a good car boot sale hunt and this isn't the first or the last of them on this pile. So we now have The End of Her by Shavila Pina. I really enjoyed um, The Couple Next Door. Loved The Couple Next Door actually. Was really surprised by that and so did my mother-in-law. So I've picked this one up and I might donate it to her in future when I get round to reading it. It has been sat on my shelves for a while though so I don't know when that's going to be. We then also have Times Convert by Deborah Harkness. <laughs> And this, I believe, is a spin-off from the um, Discovery of Witches because I started reading the back of it and it was talking about things that happened in the Discovery of Witches and I had that to read, I just haven't read it yet. So yeah, I kind of needed to get on that. But um, I picked this one up thinking it was a sequel and or a standalone, sorry, and it wasn't, it was actually like a sequel, kind of like a spin-off. So yeah, there's something further on in this book haul <laughs> that um, relates to this, so you'll have to wait and see for that one. Next up, we have some ones that I got in giveaways and just gifted because people are lovely human beings. First of all being Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I won this one on TikTok. Does the Amazon thing have a date in it? No it doesn't but this is from Catherine. Um, I won this in her giveaway and she's absolutely lovely. If you don't already follow her it's Catherdale and um, I'll put it down there if I remember. But this one it was another one that I was really really anticipating this year. There's so many books that I've been anticipating and so many that I haven't read. So yeah there's that one. We then have a couple of books from the beautiful Sarah over at Reader's Ramblings on Instagram. If you don't know who Sarah is, she is an absolute darling. Um, I went to uni with her. I've explained this in a previous vlog. Basically, we went to uni together. That, that's it. That's the story. So she bought me two books that um, one of them I know for a fact she has read and absolutely loved. And the other one I'm not too sure if she's read, but I read something similar to this one earlier on this year and absolutely loved it. And that is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I read To Kill a Kingdom and as a result of To Kill a Kingdom, added this onto my wish list because this is another siren story. And I absolutely lapped up To Kill a Kingdom, absolutely loved it, need a sequel. So this one follows a princess of the island kingdom, Visid Visidia, Amora, who has spent her entire life trying to be the high animancer the master of souls. The rest of the realm could choose their magic but to secure her place as heir to the throne she must master the monarchy's dangerous soul magic. Demonstration goes horribly wrong, she's forced to flee, she strikes a deal with Bastion, a mysterious pirate. He'll help her prove she's fit to rule if she'll help him reclaim his stolen magic. She faces legendary monsters, cross paths with vengeful mermaids, deal with a story she never expected or risk the fate of Visidia and lose the crown forever. I don't know if it is Siren actually now looking at that. I feel like it is but apparently it's going to be this, this year's biggest YA fantasy and this came out, when did this come out? Oh, there's a map. Hello map. When did this come out? 2020. So, I mean, not quite the year's biggest YA fantasy, but it's up there. I'll give it that much. She then also went completely the other scale, A Touch of Darkness by Scarlet Sinclair, which is a Hades and Persephone smutty smut retelling. That's all I know other than the fact that it has a really pretty cover. Yes, she got me smut. So there's that. I will get round to it when I'll get round to it because with things coming up soon, I don't want other people re looking at them and going, oh, Rebecca, what's that book about? And I have to go, here doesn't Persephone retelling smut. Read it. Um, not to my in-laws anyway. So next up we have Active Age Eve Brown. This is the third in the Brown Sisters series. This one, I did have to double check that name, um, is by Talia Hibbert. Here's the thing, right? So there's quite a lot of like romancy, lovey-dovey stuff on this pile because I read The Flat and thought I would instantly love romance so I want to binge read the series that's it that's that's the story I just want to binge read that series so that's it for gifted books I didn't I bought that for myself I didn't I gifted myself that book um but moving on we have a pile of miscellaneous and some special editions and also some books from Barter Books because we all know I love a good Barter Books trip which will feature in one of my vlogs I'm not sure when the timing is of this but the Barter Books books will be in a vlog. So first of all, Natalie from Scotty's of Books made me do it. Sugar Bane by uh, Douglas Stewart. Now this, people call it Sugar Bane, but I think it's Sugar Ben, as in child, as in your, your wee Ben, as in the Ben. Northeast called Ben, child, like a young child, um, like your own child or a family member's child. Um, like, oh, bless the little Ben, man, the Bens. Isn't the Ben canny? That's a, that's a thing I've heard before. This follows a young child's life, I believe. This was their, I think this was their first book for the Scotties. What's it called? 
the book club that Natalie by Scotty and Scotty's in Books runs um, on Instagram. Anyway, I think it was the first book for that and I'd seen a lot of people reading it. I was like, you know what? It's a different kind of fiction for me to read. I'm going to try it. It has Scottish terms, like it's written in Scots almost from what I can tell as in it's written in Scot like it has Scottish slang in it. I just opened a page and it was like how are you wee poofy bastard or something like that which I mean this is going to be a right laugh I think. I think it's going to be a right laugh but also make me cry so I need to be in the right frame of mind for that one but it was only 3 99 in Costco so I thought why not. I then have The Wicker King by Kate Ancrum. This is for a reading project that I want to do. This is for a reading project similar to the reading like videos. I just need to get around to picking those books and conveniently sneaking them on my TBR. So if you spot this on my TBR in a uh, Top Trumps video you know that that reading project is trying to happen that month and then you can try and put two and two together and figure out who I'm actually reading like for that project. That'll be a nice little game that nobody will play. Next up we have The Bromance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams. This one was a book swap pick. I love book swap. I just need to list more of my books to swap. But book swap, uh, I've spoke about this before as well. This follows a man who has heartbreak and in order to get over that heartbreak and understand how he can be better, he creates his own book club. I'm very interested in this one just to try and see it from the man's perspective almost because obviously as a woman you don't really see the man's perspective of a breakup particularly if they are heartbroken although it is written by a female writer so I don't know how that's going to work but apparently a lot of people really love this. So early on in this video I mentioned a certain trilogy, a certain series that I'd accidentally bought a sequel kind of of. I went and bought Big Two at the weekend. This is Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. I got this one at a car boot sale for a pound. This was on a table for a youth football club um, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to have a look. They had like, also it's floppy. They had like a couple of pasting tables worth. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go, see what it's like. I actually pick up the first one now. So that's positive. That's a plus, And it means I can watch the series. So all good. Next up, we have Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Again, from the same car boot sale and the same table. Because I've seen the hype on TikTok and it kind of fits in with a couple of things that I want to do to try and do like a TikTok book video thing um anyway it's probably never come to fruition but i'm kind of intrigued i kind of want to give it a go see what the fuss is about whether i like it is another thing this is insane we still have lots of books left to go so next up we have the newest new additions to my uh my collection and that is a master of gin by p Gillelli clark I bought this one when i was in waterstones it was on the buy one get one half price and um i bought this one because I bought Vanessa it for her birthday. Not with the intention of buddy reading it, but with the intention of buying myself it. So I got two copies of it and it's set in Cairo in 1912, following the youngest woman working for the Ministry of Alchemy. So it's like magic. I'm interested. I'm there. We then also have The Wolf Den by Elodie Harbour. This one I picked up because we were thinking of getting Dan's Marmot for his birth for her birthday, my mother-in-law's birthday. But I read the back of it and gave it to Dan and said what do you think but I have to proofread this because it follows the working working women of Pompeii so <laughs> yeah might not be suitable to give to my mother-in-law for her birthday may have to encourage her to purchase it herself next up we have the first sister by Lyndon A Lewis this was three pound on Amazon and I'd seen this one on my wish list and it was three pound three pound which means the paperback's coming out soon, probably. I'm very, very excited for this one. I mean, I don't know if you can see like the little effect it's got on it. Very excited. First sister has no name and no voice. Legal Val Lucius has no faith and no loyalty. Now both must decide what they are willing to sacrifice in the name of duty or love. Very excited. We then have three Illumicrate editions. We're nearly at the end. So we have, first off we have The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. All of these, these three have featured in a book um, unboxing video somewhere along the line. Very pretty. This one was also high on my radar for this year. Then also have She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Stunning, stunning edition. Really, really well thought out. I'm very, very impressed and it carries out onto the inside as well. There's that. It's just, it's all very pretty. It's all very well done. Well done, Illumicrate, for uh, that one. Very impressed. Um, we then also have... <laughs> almost had almost got lost in the book for lunch uh six crimson cranes by elizabeth lim this one um is supposed to be really really good i think i think it's supposed to be more serious and damning than the pink and purple fluffiness um kind of and uh, sort of gives off so i think it's supposed to be more serious than pretty and purple i have as i said spoke about all of those in various unboxing videos You're near the end i swear Bar books 
best place in the world. If you're in the UK, highly, highly recommend that you visit Northumberland and visit Annick because that's where it's based. It's a disused train station. It's absolutely beautiful. Hundreds upon hundreds upon thousands of beautiful used books that need some love. Go there. First one I picked up is Shift by uh, Hugh Harry. This is the sequel to Wool. Very intrigued about this one. I was going to dig an F at DNF. I was going to get rid of Wool, but then Vanessa read it and she really, really liked it. So it's kind of encouraged it to stay on my shelves a little bit longer. So I picked up the sequel when I seen it in Barter Books. We then have a copy of These Rebel Raves by Sarah Rash, which I don't know if you can see it. I have a copy of, so this is probably going to go to Vanessa, let's be honest. Um, it was an ARC edition, so that one's going to go to Vanessa. We then also have We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. This one is a thriller. A must read crime of the year for 2021, I want to say. 2020. Okay, yeah, so this edition was published in 2020. I'd seen this one around supermarkets and things and I was very, very intrigued by it. So I'm very pleased that I managed to find this one. It follows a young teenager who became a killer. Fast forward 30 years, is he still the killer? He's been released from prison for this murder that he may or may not have committed. And somebody investigating it drags up a lot of secrets that nobody needed to know. So very intrigued by that one. We then also have The Dragon Republic by RF Kuang. This is the sequel to The Poppy War, honestly. It's in brand new Nick. Like, I don't understand how this ended up there unless people thought they were picking up the Poppy War. I think they thought they were picking up book one, but then they've realised that actually it's the sequel. So um, I now have book one and book two. I'm so pleased I found this one, honestly. Like, it's an absolute steal as well because I used my credit. Very happy about that one. <laughs> Lastly, again, an absolute steal. Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes, which I did actually try and start read on the car home. On the car? On the car? In the car on the way home. And I got about 40 pages into it. Really, really intrigued by it so far. And I'm going to try and fit this on my October TBR so I can read it from the beginning and get it done. Because I'm very excited to see this one. This is basically like Game of Thrones. Um, but make it more accessible and easier to read because game of thrones is hefty so very excited to get around to this one and uh that is it say so that is it this is over half an hour of footage so that is it for the mahusive book haul i don't know when i'm next gonna film one i can see more books that i have <sighs> I can see more books that I have, but they're just gonna have to wait. There is The Shadows Between Us and also Fable, both sent to me by Sarah from Readers Ramblings. There is the um, Fairy Loot edition of These Hollow Vows, as well as their After Love, which is um, the, the, the extra book that they had in August's box. And there's also the Illumicrate August book as well. So yeah, there's an extra like five books to add to my TBR. So anyway, yes, thank you all so, so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please open that description box. You'll find a link to all my social medias as well as the like and subscribe. They really do help out my channel when you do either of those or both of them. If you've made it this far, leave me lots and lots and lots of book stacks and let me know um, in the comments what your favourite book is from these book stacks or one that you're really excited to read. I'd love to have a chat with you all. Maybe we can arrange a really, really, really chilled uh, buddy read. Um, but Considering this has been building since like May, May, June time, I think I've done a pretty good job of destroying my bank balance. Yeah, so thank you all so, so much for watching. I shall see you all soon with another video. Um, let me know in the comments down below, as I said, would you prefer to see me read first? Or is there any you would like me to read and make a vlog of? That would be interesting. Let me know in the comments down below and I shall see you all soon with another video. Bye.